the Monotaka American Indian site, which is number two after mine, has the discussion of the advantages of American Indian science, which were many, and this is quite true. As I say on my other site about this, it's believed by many that the reason that the Europeans actually colonized the New World and the rest of the world instead of the other way around is only because of an accident of geography and weather. The wide Eurasian weather band allowed for a large amount of computing and all the advantages achieved by sun were retained. They're retained by the writing for one thing. So I believe, of course, that prehistoric means without writing, they say. But the more important claim, and the reason that I welcome quite much the uh, knowledge of the American science, like all the crops that they cultivated that the Europeans copied, all the great medicines that they learned how to cultivate in their metallurgy. In his great book, Cosmos, Carl Sagan asks why some civilizations of the world had science stillborn, while others had it like the Greeks. The Greeks just didn't really invent science, but they almost just didn't miss it by a million miles, he's saying. And Carl Sagan is also saying an important truth is that he believes that science resonates so well with the higher realms of our brains that every civilization in the world given a time would have invented science. So in that respect, certainly the claim that the Indian science was as advanced as the Europeans when the Europeans arrived in the new world is certainly a real truth. Life is sort of like a horse race, and the rich people often, they win only because of luck. They get ahead, and then they add more to their lead, and they win more. What the Manitaka Indian site is saying is that it's only luck that often determines who wins, and so we should look at the good side of the people who aren't as lucky, because they're not bad people. I'm certainly not one of these people trying to assume what I'm trying to prove, or trying to prove what I'm trying to assume. I'd only have half as much the distance to the line as half the distance to the center times twice. If we assume what we're trying to prove, we're often having legal problems. <laughs> and lawyers often get people out of trouble with that meant for lawyers and doctors. After all, health is important in much of our life. During the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, the Europeans didn't have science. They were turned against themselves. And so science wasn't invented until later in the 1600s. On my other page, I talk about this idea that there's also overcrowding involving in much of the influence of history. The ancient world had the golden age when the overcrowding was low but increasing. Then the dark ages would arrive after there was competition for decreased resources per person. You know, there's less resources per person that become stressed, so they can't really be as efficient because the definition of altruism and love and cooperation like super cooperation, they say that separated us from the rest of evolution and history of evolution. It wasn't there as much because we had more competition for reduced resources then. And as I say on my other site, this would have then been causing the European rebirth in the 1600s because of the plague. There is no bad, there's not really good. This is what evolution tells us. Or often this is true, we hope so. But in the rest of the world, the weather band wasn't east to west with a large band of good weather. It was mostly north south, like in the New World and also in other places of the world like Africa. So it's tough to travel across the weather band and flourish and thrive there. As in the farther north, if you go into history, the ages like the Stone Age or the Iron Age or the Bronze Age, those ages arrive later in the history of the rest of Europe. It's kind of like a current that's flowing faster down south, but it's flowing slower in the north. One good thing about living that far north is they don't have much of a water bill because it's always powdered water. I didn't realize about Africa. You look at the map of Africa, you can take like Europe and Asia, part of the New World, and sit them into Africa with more room, yeah. Because Africa is on the map, and you look at it straight on, and the other countries like Greenland, Greenland's got a whole lot more land now, I think. Supposedly, Bertrand Russell, the philosopher, proved that you can't draw a round map of a flat surface without distortion. But supposedly, Buckminster Fuller, the inventor who had the most in the who's who, you may have heard of him, I can't really imagine how Buckminster Fuller was able to make that map so it was flat when it was a round map. Maybe just use the level all the way around. And so we say the ancient world, and I believe this may be true on worlds with advanced civilizations, generally, you start out with a golden classic age when civilization is first there, and the overcrowding increases, there's a dark age, and then there may be a rebirth with a plague as the plague has evolved with that type of life and so sooner or later, evolution is going to find a way to 
take advantage of that. And Colonel says you were living before the plague, and then there will be a golden age of rebirth, and finally there will be a modern age, like in our age, when the overcry is increasing and the stress and debt and stuff are increasing also. And so if you look at the histories of the parallel histories of the Orient and the West, the Occidentals and the Orientals, and Eurasia, you see that they have parallel histories because in the ancient time there was Buddha and there was Jesus, and then there was the Dark Ages like the feudal Japan. Then there was the rebirth of the Golden Age of Ming, China in the 1600s. And then finally, there was the modern age in both East and West, or will be was. About 600 BC, Carl Sagan was also saying in Cosmos that it seems unlikely that all these events were totally unrelated about Buddha in the East and the other religions like Confucius, which is not really a religion, but it's a system of ethics. And also about the great philosophers in the time of the Greeks and about the other philosophers and, and the time of first going around Africa by the Egyptians and boats. Time of exploration like the original pre-Socratic philosophers who almost did invent science. They were doing experiments and they just kind of later on stagnated. Carl Sagan attributed that to slavery, but I think it was because the overcrowding was increasing. And that made them less interested in being more real and active. Even so, as with the Spanish conquest of Central America, I believe that slavery really did have a bad influence on the Spanish because they got a lot of money, had all that money, but they just didn't do well later on because in European history, I think some of you were down on them because of what they'd done to the Indians that the Spanish people really didn't prosper or flourish. And so I agree with Carl Sagan to some extent that this is part of the influence of why the ancients were saying they didn't like mechanics, they didn't like machines, they weren't doing things like that in the later time of the ancient history. Much of it was, not later not so great, but a lot of it was great earlier on. But because you flip a coin, you have four flips of the coin, east and west, the Europe and the Asians, you flip them four times, you know, low overcrowding at the start, there's a golden age, both east and west. Higher overcrowding, there's the, there's the feudal age, the dark age, east and west, Japan and Europe. But again, there's going to be reduced overcrowding by the plague. There's a golden age, the Ming China dynasty. Then finally, you flip it again, and there's the modern age. There's like communism and problems with debt arising, both east and west. So I think if you flip the coin like this, if you flip the coin eight times, one time for each probability, and you get heads each time, it's 16 to 1 that this is not a causal association. Only an 8% chance that overcrowding has an influence in the most general important way about like supply and demand with competition for resources. You're talking about money. The money fails, there's often severe crashes. This will be because it's like a deep territorial type thing about supply and demand and competition for those resources. It's sort of like what I think about evolution's return because of what people have done to evolution wasn't natural or kind, it's kind of artificial. So it just tends to be more weak in the long run, if artificial means weak, or weaker at any rate than what's most natural. So I believe the reason that when Columbus arrived in the world, the Indians hadn't yet been writing and they were still prehistoric, was because they had a smaller house of good weather, and so they had less advantage of computing. Like when you're poor, you don't have as much time to compute and do things like science. Like Benjamin Franklin was the gentleman science, or Darwin, there's a history of the gentleman science in European culture because they have enough money to have time to actually do science. Without the time, they might not be able to as, as often. But as with rich or poor, it's often just luck who wins or loses. It's not to say that it's not just luck that the Indians didn't win as much as they could have, or that they never could by having science that they're using today. But by the luck of having a smaller house of shared inventions and culture, they may have never gotten really started at inventing science because in the new world, like in the old world, there was first an ancient age, and then it started to increase the overcrowding sooner. When the Europeans arrived in the Amazon, they say the jungle of Amazon, it's like the most mysterious and untamed place. But when they arrived, there was enough overcrowding that they would go up the Amazon River, and there's houses beside the river. You go 10 miles, there's a village, and in that village, there's 20 or 30 families. You go 10 more, there's another village of 20 or 30 families. They had roads that were smooth roads like England nowadays. There was a dude called the Colossus of Roads in the 1800s in England. He was like inventing the Macadarn service, never the Macadam. 
And so they had these smooth roads without trash on them. They picked up all the trash. They stayed clean right through the jungle. Roads 30 feet wide. And so the idea that overcrowding was increasing sooner in the New World is just like in the Europeans, no different. And so I believe that there was essentially sort of less time of that golden age there because the overcrowding was increasing fast. And there wasn't as much time to develop something like science or writing or at least what we might call science ourselves, a developed science, so how we develop sciences we have. More particularly, I think that as the overcrowding was increasing, it caused increased competition for decreased resources among the Indians, and that made them so that they're competing so much that they don't have time to invent science just as they didn't invent science in the Eurasian Dark Ages. As a painter and a sculptor, I have great admiration for the Mayan religious architecture. I think it's the most beautiful architecture there is in the history of the world more beautiful than even the ancient Greek, which I think is number two. And there was the golden age of the classic Maya kings. I think the Maya were showing the signs of the golden age as the ancient age of the Eurasians, except that the overcrowding increased pretty rapidly and they had less room to build up that knowledge that they would have reached science. So if, as Carl Sagan was saying, science was stillborn in the other cultures of the world, we ask, why would this be so? One reason Carl Sagan believed the ancient Greeks almost just did invent science was because they were at one of the crossroads of civilization, where the boats would cross, well, while the other civilizations were at the centers. They're like sort of a concentrated central land area. In the ancient Alan realm of Greece, you have neither too much connectivity that it stagnates, yet enough connectivity to unify and connect and cleanse out also by the separation of the islands, so no one could control the whole situation, and so they had more breathing room, more oxygen flowing in and out. This is maybe the reason why the Maya culture was actually the nearest to an ancient classic civilization we find in the New World, because they have ocean on both sides at near reach. After all, water transportation was the most heavy as now used intermodal freight container that we'd ever see. And so the great question of whether science would have been in all the cultures of the world if they'd been given time, I don't know the answer to this. And it's a really deep question. And perhaps someday we'll be able to find a way with computer simulations to prove or disprove this somehow. About overcrowding and its influence, it would make it so the Indians weren't cooperating, so we had super cooperation. That's what gave us our advantage. They didn't invent writing and, you know, um, science, perhaps what we might call science. And yet the Europeans had the same problem in the Dark Ages. They weren't competing either, so they didn't really have science. Only the luck of the plague made it so they won. My complexion is much better now. Ah, what a relief. Zitta lore. Dating a sweet 1600. I was thinking that the discovery of the CRISPR method may be a viable method of getting back control of history. Everybody owns their future because they're no longer so stressed. They don't own their own future with the money. As the commission for the decreased resources is increasing. Carl Sagan was saying for some reason the ancient world fell and it gave itself a sort of do-it-itself brain surgery, but he didn't know why it fell. I think it was because of the overcrowding. And one thing we say about bad governments when they come to power, they tend to reduce the overcrowding. It's sort of evolution's method of trying to keep it from increasing more. If you have microorganisms in a pond and you increase them too much, they get cancer and it reduces it back down. So too, our civilization before the invention of civilization, well, yeah, so creative, it had the same mechanism. There was no civilization, so we weren't all connected up, so if the civilization fails, we don't lose either. Kind of like how cancer drugs are kind of general, they're like a, a blunt-edged tool, but it gets in the general area where it's healthy once more. So the emotional stress caused by increased competition for decreased resources, or we could say they had the same amount of labor and they got less than they would ever would naturally feel bad either way, we might say this is a measure of the cohesiveness or the cooperation of people with each other. So using the new method of gene editing with CRISPR may be a method of reducing the overcrowding. And I see sites that are saying, you know, all right, you be first. You be the one to reduce the overcrowding. But the bad governments are going to do it at any rate. But there is no bad that is not very good. I believe that the communists may be the first to use CRISPR to reduce the overcrowding because they're suffering the most. The suicide rate in China for people under 30 is the leading cause of death. They're suffering the most, and they want the most relief, and I could hardly blame them. You may not have heard of the CRISPR method, but it's a new method of changing genes much more cheaply and reliably than they ever have before. It just goes into the little Pac-Man, snips it out, and changes the gene. 
And the beauty of the CRISPR method is that you can take it later on and return back and put the genes in the general area that you want to replace, and it sifts out the ones that were there before and replaces it completely with the original genes. So we aren't going to be increasing genetic damage if we use CRISPR by this method. I want to say like the microorganisms in the pond. Aren't we braver? Aren't we strong? You know, life is about sacrifice. It's not about comfort. That's the great lie. I believe that life is difficult, and I believe in a sort of divine discontent in the world and not of the world. And the communist societies may want to reduce it the most first because they want to be strong. I imagine the possibility that a golden age like the 1600s of the ancient world would return to communist nations who had reduced the overcrowding. They aren't communist anymore. And the other nations, they all go to live in a shack. And they become communist, and they decide they want to reduce it also. Well, I should go wear more watches. March is when your television starts. It starts.